Hello dear Transform Believer and welcome to Transform Daily YouTube channel. Today Apostle Joshua Simon will be showing us how altars work, what makes altars, how they operate. So if you if you started the part one with us, this is the part two. Please, I want you to stay for the commentary. There's something important I want to share with you. I know that this video will bless your life. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. You will learn so much. Your eyes will be open and God will bless you through this video in Jesus name. Amen. How does an altar work? Please write this down. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. And I want to reveal it to you now. All satanic altars, systems of authorization, systems of communication, right? They are powered by one major altar access point or one major altar now forgive me to make reference to my dear film lord of the rings remember that our movie now remember if you've not watched it i don't know what to tell you but you just follow god will grant you understanding remember i i hope i understand the film really very well but i know that there were many rings that were given to kings and then there was one ring is that true that powers the remaining other rings this is what i'm trying to teach you that all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar that means no matter what you do to all other altars if this one altar still remain you wasted your time now this is the mistake that most people have that they just keep rebuking things individually poverty this one that one all satanic altars are powered by one major altar pay attention now it's called the altar of sin and iniquity write it down please judges chapter 6 and verse 1 the altar of sin and iniquity this is the altar that powers every other satanic altar and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years. What was the cause of the problem? Evil in the sight of the Lord. The altar of sin and iniquity. And hold on, before you assume any self-righteousness, I want to tell you there are different levels of sin there is your personal sin when it has to do with altars there are territorial sins and there are sins that come from bloodlines so don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me the the altar of sin and iniquity hosea chapter 7 and verse 1 i found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully look up please let me let me let me read it for you when i would have healed israel then the iniquity of ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of samaria i was about to come and heal them but there was something that was discovered when i would have healed israel the iniquity of ephraim was discovered romans chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14 romans chapter 5 the bible says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin are we together now look how serious this issue of death is and yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in he says so then death passed upon all men for all have sinned we're reading to 14 13 now for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law 14 now this scripture blessed me so much nevertheless he said death reigned it didn't just come it now came and even reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression do you know what this means this is he's talking about us now the effect of that original seed it came and reigned even 
after them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the figure of him who is to come the altar of sin and iniquity john chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2 john chapter 9 the bible says and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now hear what the disciples said verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin are you seeing the disciples they went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause remember these guys had been under the mentorship of jesus this man's condition there must be something that has authorized satan he said who sin this man or his parents there was something they had known about the teaching of jesus some versions will say who sin him or his father because the word father means source so is it him or his background both of them can create an effect in his life who sinned i wrote down here just for your quick learning three levels of sin with respect with respect to the activity of altars three levels of sin number one personal sin personal sin first john chapter 1 and verse 8 personal sin three levels of sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us period the bible states it very clearly unmistakable there number two territorial sin territorial sin that means your personal sin you can repent before god but there is territorial sin a territory can sin against god an example sodom and gomorrah genesis 18 from verse 21 sodom and gomorrah was not just a personal sin he appears to abraham we are reading to 22 to 23 i will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crowd in fact let's start from 20. let's start from 20. he says the lord said because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin as a territory is very grievous uh-huh i will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come to me if not i will know verse 22 it says and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abraham stood yet with the lord one last verse and abraham drew, drew near and said will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked that means in that city they were righteous and wicked people the righteous man being lot yet as far as god was concerned as a territory they were sinners hmm. statistics show sadly that nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations are you corrupt but it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear nationally speaking is that true no matter how righteous you are the whatever lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a nigerian passport we all corporately no matter how individually righteous we are you have to face that backlash until as a territory we are changed are you getting what i'm saying now sodom and gomorrah a territory can sin another example jonah chapter 1 nineveh nineveh jonah chapter 1 and verse 3 and then we'll go to chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3 jonah chapter 1 and verse jonah chapter 1 verse 1 now the word of the lord came to jonah the son of amittai saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to nineveh that great city and cry against cry against what the city cry against the city for their wickedness is come up before me verse 3 
Uh, you know what happened to Jonah? Jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience. And you know that Jonah was angry because he said, Lord, I know these people. You are right. If I talk to them now and they repent, that means a territory can repent of their sins. Are we together? Chapter 3 and verse 1. Now Jonah came out of the belly of the fish. Verse 1 now. 3 verse 1. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee that means what I told you go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity and if you don't do anything about it judgment is coming what happened verse 3 so Jonah arose and went on to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord it says now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we're going to be reading what happened because as soon as Jonah announced that the Bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if I stole money and I bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we're all sinners so the animals fasted it's in your bible praise the lord so there's territorial sin the last level of sin is seen based on foundations and bloodlines please write it down don't worry don't be afraid of hearing all these words i know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time you just trust me i'm a good pilot sin based on foundations and bloodlines don't forget these three levels of sin personal sin territorial sin and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline psalms 11 and verse 3 it says if the foundation be destroyed what can the not what can men do even the righteous will be affected Exodus chapter 34 from verse 6. Exodus 34 and verse 6. Watch this now. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Next verse. Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty he says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh he says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worship next verse he says Moses now if I have found grace we are reading to 14 in your sight O Lord I pray thee go among us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity are you seeing Moses repenting and asking the Lord he said this one is not just for myself I, I agree with what with what you have said verse 10 he says Okay, let's go to verse 9. Watch this. Moses is pleading now on behalf of his people. He says, And pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. How did God respond to that issue? Verse 10, please. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not seen done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Reading to 14, verse 11 now, quickly. Observe thou that, observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I will drive out before thee the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, the Jebusites. Uh -huh. Take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest let it be for a snare in the midst of thee verse 13 
but ye shall destroy their is that in your bible i want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars break their images and cut down their groves last verse for thou shalt worship no other god for the lord whose name is jealous wow i only used to read that he's a jealous god and he's saying the lord whose name not negative satanic jealousy let's not confuse what is written here jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about god when he sees that spiritual halotry from god to god and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement I've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance that even the sin of man God did not cast it out of man as powerful as God is he didn't cast sin out of man the lamb had to come and die lived 33 years died to purchase redemption for us is someone following now just like demonic altars all godly altars are powered by one major altar too have i lost you all godly altars are powered by one major altar that means if you see any platform that has been available to men to encounter god to authorize activities of the realm of the spirit there is one major altar that powers them all the Bible calls it the throne of grace. The throne of grace alongside the blood of Jesus that is called the eternal covenant. That is the principal altar that powers everything good in the life of the believer. Please do not forget this. Every system of authorization, every system of exchange, every system that allows for interaction with the angelic, with the Holy Spirit, every system that commands spiritual virtues to come upon the saints is powered by this one altar, the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter 4, please, from verse 4 to 16. If you're following, please say amen. amen. 14, I meant to say, Hebrews 4, 14. 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god he said let us hold fast our profession 15 now for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like us yet without sin 16 let us therefore come boldly unto that throne of grace he says we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah hebrews chapter 12 please from verse 22 to 24 please write these scriptures down but ye are come to mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels next verse to the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect 24 now 
it says unto jesus hallelujah the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood that he used you see that now the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel you read what paul was teaching that jesus carried his own blood as the high priest and poured it upon that altar once and for all if you ever see any any believer in christ walking consistently in favor walking consistently in grace walking consistently in victory having divine encounters those are different altars and platforms that make for that possibility but the one altar that powers it all is the throne of grace that throne you see god sitting on is an altar who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand against our king no one can no one will oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him oh, 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 oh. my god can you imagine that he sits on an altar an altar that ensures that what he says if you believe it and you access it and you see every other person who has tried to put together an altar will eventually die but there is he that liveth and abideth the throne of grace is an altar it is the throne of grace that powers that altar of prayer the altar of favor every platform that allows you to receive of any spiritual blessing is powered by this one altar the same way every demonic occurrence around families territories and nations is powered principally by the altar of sin and iniquity is someone learning already hebrews chapter 13 20 and 21 hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant 21 the same way that blood even made a way for jesus christ to return from the dead it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will that means whatever needs to make you go forward there is an altar that insists that the provision is there for you this is very powerful every time you come to jesus and hand over your life to him more than just receiving of his life you subscribe to the covenant of that altar are we together yes so it does not matter what altars it does not matter what demonic things it does not matter whether my grandfather or great-grandfather whether my region worship idols it does not matter what it is one thing is that the moment you become connected to that one altar that throne of grace through the blood of the eternal covenant Wow, what a powerful message from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, how altars work. Please know that we are going to post the part two, part three of the message in the next um, exposure. So um, do well to like this video, share to someone so that they can bless their life and subscribe to the channel. Put on your post notifications so that you can get um, access to the part three. 
um welcome to the commentary section of transform daily youtube channel my name is Kola dave godman the admin of transform youtube channel and i'm here to just um encourage you again there's something i really want to share with you today about what apostle said now as a believer we're all believers encouraging ourselves in the lord but really i want to say that if there's anything you have noticed since you started watching this message this series and you really want to make a project of it i suggest that you you know go back and write down those scriptures look at everything critically write down the scriptures and make a project out of it because at the end of this there's going to be a long prayer section and i i feel it's something that you should make a project of because you want that situation to come to an end right so you know that as you are connected to the altar of grace which powers prayer which powers favor which powers change of situation and circumstances which powers everything good we experience in the kingdom we have an advantage and the next one that is going to be coming up is to show us a lot more deeper you know apostle is taking us on a journey and i hope you're on that journey with us in these videos so get a paper get a get a book make a project of things as a believer you don't need um yeah you need people to pray for you like you need prophetic um declarations you need prophets sent to your life but you can't depend on people to pray for you you need to grow you need to make a project of situations that have defiled medical uh, uh, attention defiled the name of jesus in your life you need to take it up as a personal project and war with it the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do the righteous can correct the foundation the bible says that he has given us authority to pull down to tear down you know he said we will raise the foundation of many generations so god has given us that ability to raise foundations that have been broken down that have been destroyed so believers don't give up don't give up we have the power god has put everything within us all we need to do is to know the, to know what to do and that's why we have this message the, the knowledge will come and light will come and once revelation comes every other thing is easy so i want to encourage somebody today that's like oh ah every author what will i do now i've discovered oh that i have something that is not in line with god's word in my life i'm scared you don't need to be afraid yes you don't need to be afraid this teaching was not to make anybody afraid but, but to bring victory but to bring victory thank you lord for this message thank you for making us realize that we could be part of something bigger than us maybe a territorial sin maybe a blood maybe something from our bloodline and we know that the blood the earth, the throne of grace is stronger than the throne the the altar that powers sin i don't care what sin that is the blood of jesus is sufficient today tomorrow forever to wash that sin away thank you so much for joining us in this part i believe you loved the video i believe you were blessed by it um do well to like this video and subscribe god bless you